Hi everyone, welcome back to another Cut Above with Chris. Today I'm going to be using a soap which on first smelling when I purchased it wasn't my cup of tea, I thought it was going to be too floral and just not quite my thing. However, I have used this off camera and to my surprise I really enjoyed it. So the soap for today is, I believe, Syriang. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it. Beautiful label as you can see the sort of floral bouquet in the background there and lovely sort of neon signage. And this one is an exclusive for Top of the Chain out of Canada. Now I actually was gifted this soap from Carmine. Sorry, I said I purchased it. I was gifted it from Carmine over at Top of the Chain just as a thank you for purchasing. Well, I've purchased quite a large amount of, in terms of cost, quite a large amount of stuff. And he threw this one in and wasn't 100% sold on it when I smelled it. It was all right, it smelled very floral, however, on that first use, it really surprised me, so. I do get a sort of, it's floral, but I get more of a sort of stem smell from it. I can't really describe it to you. It's almost like if you crush the stem of a flower, you get that sort of acidic green scent that you get from crushing the, the, the juices and stuff from the actual stem. That's the scent that I get initially from it. It's a little bit more complex than that, of course, being barrister a man, and there is, a cologne type thing happening. Now once you open it up with a bit of water in the brush it becomes something else and it evolves into this beautiful sort of sweet gourmandy but dark and earthy cologne scent. I can't really describe it. And in a lot of ways Barrister Man is great at that. It makes a lot of scents that smell different to begin with and totally evolve during the shave. And that's one of the reasons why I love Barrister Man. Now this one is, I believe, in the Excelsior base, but don't quote me on that. I am not 100% sure. And just looking at the back, I couldn't tell you anyway with ingredients. That is the ingredients list there. I'm sure someone else will tell me otherwise whether it is or isn't. But whether it's the, the Glissant or the Excelsior, it's definitely not Reserve. It's one of those two. Both of them are great soaps. The Excelsior, in my opinion, is best of the three. But even if this is Glissant, it's still an amazing soap base. So I've been working through my brushes, sort of, not, not methodically, but I've just been going through synthetic, natural, synthetic, natural, off camera, and it just so happens that my craving shaving was the next one in line, and it sort of matches the labelling pretty nicely. Now this one is Charles, I think it's Charles Bullock, is the guy that runs this, top bloke, and he very kindly made this for me as a thank you for sort of helping him in the beginning with sort of setting his channel up and getting him up and running a little bit and chucking his name out there a little bit. Top guy, and I have to say his brushes are super, they really are beautiful. I don't, I can never quite get it to catch in the light, but there's a lot of sort of pearlescent shimmer through this brush, it's gorgeous. And I call this the Siri brush because it is actually, or as close to, all the colours in the Siri logo from Apple, which being an Apple user, Apple fanboy, if you want to call it that. Everything in my house is pretty much Apple, other than my Android box, which is playing in the background. But yeah, it knocked this one out of the park. The knot in here, I believe, is a 26 mil Dura knot from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. It's a beautiful knot, it really is. It's in fact, all round, it's one of my favorite brushes in the den. So here we go, straight into this soap. This is going to be a head shave and a neck shave. I did my cheeks last night. The beard's getting out of control. And for you guys out there that are calling for his death, the beard death, it will be coming off soon, I can assure you, probably within the next week or two. I've sort of had enough of it. I'm spending more time now trying to keep it straight. I'm having to go to the barbers and pay 10 bucks to get it trimmed. And I'm sort of like, you know what? I enjoy this hobby because the stuff that I purchase is what I use. And I really enjoy that part of smelling. Yeah, it's got a beautiful sort of cologne green scent to it. So yeah, it sort of defeats the purpose for me. It was part of the sort of gimmick for me being in wet shaving that shave my head and I shave my face and never ever have to go to the barbers again. And now I'm back at the barbers, which I enjoy. I've known Paul from our local barbers for 12 years now. His son is now doing it and he's an excellent barber as well, Ryan. But it's just something that's not really required in my life. I could stick, stick to the beard and mince around with it myself and try and keep it trim and trim it down and things, but to be honest, I enjoy shaving way more than I do enjoy having a beard. So it will be coming off soon. I just need to pick the right time. It'll be coming off with a straight razor and it's going to be a case of what soap and when. So here we go, I'm going to wet my head. This is a cold water shave. 
as generally they are on my channel. No prep other than the shower that I've just had. And here we go, let's paint this on. Let me just scoop the excess out of the tub, waste not, want not, and all that. It's actually a fair amount in there, not too much. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure what the scent notes are on this, to be honest. I haven't even looked. All I know is it's a floral. It's quite a dark floral. But it works so well. And I was surprised that I actually enjoyed it. I thought I would struggle with it. I've never been big on sort of floral scents. There's very few that I actually enjoy. One of them that I do enjoy. Is Fougere Bouquet. From Holy Cow. And it's it's a nice scent. It's not as nice as this. Very, very sort of rich. It's almost fougere like, if I'm honest, with the sort of sweetness and a sort of floral tint to it. So all I'm doing is just explain the brush in my head until I think the lather isn't growing anymore. And that's pretty much about now. What I do is I take it off, it leaves a big hole in the brush like that, and then I just get some water and drop it in, and then back on again. It can be really messy, but on the whole, it works really well. And I got that one from Michael Friedberg, that's the way he waters his brush, and I tend to find it works better, and I'm not actually losing soap in the bowl in my sink. I just keep adding it, needs a bit more. Very, very thirsty soap, which leads me to believe that it is the Excelsior range. It definitely feels thirstier than the Glissant soap base from Barrister and Man. So I've got my Man United shirt on today. We have just signed Harry Maguire over the weekend. It's been a long time coming. It's been a long time waiting for a, a quality centre back coming in. Now, personally, I don't think he's as good as some of the other guys that we could have got in the market. I'm sort of glad we bought English. English guys generally, on the whole, just tend to be better equipped and adapted to the Premier League and the, the British style of play. Which I'm back. I just had to take a quick phone call there. I'm just dipping some more water in. It wasn't a long phone call, so the ladder hasn't really dried up much. Now this ladder. It's taking a while to build you. I do apologise. Now you guys know I like to build a ladder for a while. And it's really showing me that this is the Excelsior base. I would like to think if this is the Glissant base, they must have improved on it a little bit. But I'm having to spend a long time building this ladder. And as you can see, it's really glossy. It's really dense. It's just a stunning ladder. It's just so easy to make. And I personally, I think if you sort of follow that rule, or just even follow something similar to the way I've laddered it, you cannot go wrong. Now, over here in Western Australia where I live, if you're unaware where I live, it's over in Western Australia. Our water is notoriously hard. It's really, really difficult to work a lot of things. A lot of soaps tend to struggle more than others. But Will over at Barrister and Man has created the reserve base for that issue and personally I don't think he quite nailed it in my opinion I think his reserve base is good it's very slick but difficult to work with and it's very unpredictable the lather itself okay so the razor back to a DE is my above the tie Calypso R1 and it's aluminium all aluminium razor very light very efficient very smooth and I've got a brand new Derby Usta blade which is the Darby master blade and this is Darby's sharpest blade it is made or sharpened by a new sharpening method I can't remember quite the ins and outs of it but you can google it and find out and for me it's a very sharp blade it's completely unbranded on the blade itself comes single wrapped but doesn't have a ton of glue on it a little bit but not enough to really annoy those out there that hate it it's certainly by no means like feather but let's get stuck in I'm going to go with the grain against the grain I don't know how this blade's going to perform in a head shave in this razor. I don't think I've used it in this razor for a head shave before. It's a 
very dense ladder. Now, to be honest with you, if I was off camera, I would be laddering this a bit more, I'd be putting a bit more water into it. It definitely needs it. So, as it is with the reserve base, you don't need a massive load. As you can see, it's, it's so dense, it is actually clogging up a little bit. And this is a razor which, generally, on the whole, doesn't really clog up at all. Now that part there was just against the green, and you can see again, it's sticking in there. Now, this is also, it's not just a, a knock on the, the silk there that I've made it so thick. What you will find is that because the soaps in general, so you can see that's really filling up in there now. Yeah, you can see that right through those on both sides. Uh, because I'm doing a cold water shave, you will find that the biggest majority of high quality artisan soaps out there will be very high in fat content, whether it be veg vegetable fats or animal fats, there'll be a form of fat in there, that's how the soaps are made. Now, if I get a hot water, so I'm just running some hot water now just to sort of prove the theory, I'll just run a bit of hot water through the blades, just still warming up. So that's just a little bit of hot water on there. You can see it just cleans it out straight away. So what happens with the cold water shave is you end up with, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to switch over to hot just now. I don't really want to, but it's just easy. Easier for the shave because the lather is so thick. If the lather is a little bit more watered down like it should be, I wouldn't have this issue with dissolving the cold water either. But because it's so high in fats, the cold water can't melt the fat away. It just make, if anything, it makes it firmer, makes it more difficult to get out. So I'll fill the sink now with warm water and we'll see a difference straight away I would think. Little shake. There you go. I tell you what, there's not a massive difference but there's definitely a difference. I can see the difference. It did block a little bit there. Just with a quick flick through the hot water again. Yeah, it's just melting it off now. Now one thing I've found with this razor is sometimes I lean just a little bit too hard with it. And then it gives me a bit of irritation. So it's really all about just trying to guide the razor and find all the correct angles as best I can. Yeah, this lather is so dense. Without the hot water I'd be here all day. So yeah, I would definitely say that this is the Excelsior base. If it's not the Excelsior, and it is the Glissant, then I'm pretty sure Will's done something with it because he's made it better. You can see the ladder is actually drying up over here. So it's starting to crack. So let's rinse the sink out of it. It's absolutely chock a block full of here. I've got a feeling this one's going to be pretty long. As most of my videos are. So yeah, Manchester United have signed Harry Maguire. And like I said, I still don't think it was the best that was available or the best on the market. 
I sort of look at it from the point of view of Juventus purchasing Matthias De Ligt, 19 year old Dutch centre back who's phenomenal for 67.5 million pounds and then we sign a 26 year old English defender who in my opinion is just a bit too slow for 80 million pounds or 85 I think it's going to be in the end but it's been a long time coming we've needed someone to shore up the defence someone that's reliable which he is he doesn't get injured often he's got a great pass on him and I think he'll work very well with Victor Lindelof or even Phil Jones I think Phil Jones is just needs a, a long run with no injuries. The bloke's still 26. I feel like he's been around for 30 years. He's like, he's just been going for so long. I'm just going to add a bit more water to this. And on his day, Phil Jones is a great defender. He just never seems to stay fit for long enough to show his potential. He was tipped to be the, the next big thing and it just never quite happened for him. But the fact that he's stuck around at United for so long and still gets a game says a lot for the bloke. And then again, it says a lot for United and the sort of policies as well. But the disappointing news as a result, it looks like United have finished doing business in the transfer window now. And there is rumours and murmurs that there'll be no more signings, which is a bit of a shame really because we need, we need a midfielder. I don't, I don't care what anyone tells me. Yes, we had a, an outstanding pre-season in terms of results. You can't really grumble at it. Six games played, six wins. But Paul Pogba, for me, it's been very hit and miss. And I'm sure there's a lot of United, who oh, you bastard. Just scalped myself a beauty there. Well, it's not happened for a long time. I can actually see the chunk of skin in the razor. That took a good chunk out there. When you're not concentrating. Paul Pogba has been a great player, in my opinion, at Juventus, and I think he's done a reasonable job at United. I don't think we can grumble at the bloke. Yes, he goes missing quite a bit in some of the big games, and but on a whole, the stats have been pretty good. I think the fact that he finished top goal scorer last year really with Romelu Lukaku there Anthony Martial Alexis Sanchez Marcus Rashford and yet Paul Pogba finishes top goal scorer it's pretty embarrassing for those players who I'm sure would describe themselves as strikers or very attack minded players I just want to highlight that cut in my head wasn't as a result of the poor performance of the soap it was sheerly just lapse in concentration and actually holding the razor well enough and keeping the angle correct because this is so slick this soap and to be honest I never actually felt any pain it just cleanly took the chunk out I haven't actually done that for a very very long time slice myself through pulling the blade accidentally that way
Right. I think that was me pretty much done. So other than that one little blip, as Alec Ferguson would say, not too bad. I'm going to rinse off, smack that with some stick tip, and then move on to the next shift. So I'll get this with cold water straight away. Styptic looks, you wouldn't even know I'd cut myself in. It is weeping a little bit, but not much. Right, well, I've got this razor out, I know I've already done my cheeks. I'm just going to do a quick dry pass. So that's all I do on my cheeks, I don't see the point in lathering my whole face up just to do a couple of few hairs up there, I don't have a lot of hairs on my cheeks Right, let's fill the sink up again with the neck and lather away I'm going to be using the Carve Christopher Bradley razor once again with the B plate, I think, once again, yeah. And I've got, I can't even remember the blade I've got in here. It's that same blade still? No, I've got a Gillette Nasset, which I think is about a third use or something. I don't even count anymore. I just use them until they don't feel right and then I just whip them straight out and put something else in. So I'm just going to tidy that up just a little bit so I'm not making a complete mess of my shirt. I am at work today, but obviously not for a little bit. Another hour or two, I think. What time is it now? Yeah. Here we go. I've got three and a half days growth. As you can see, it's just peeling it off. Now, I could shave just using the residual slickness. God, that scent really is a lovely scent. It's 
not for everyone. It, it, it does still have floral connotations to it. It's got a lot of sort of floral scent to it. But surprisingly for someone like myself, who I'm not a fan of floral scents, especially rose. I'm not a big fan of rose. Even though apparently that's a noble otter orbit. I'll tell you what, I've used a lot of blades in my time and I do enjoy all the blades that I've got in my den now, including that derby that sliced my head open. But Gillette Nassets are one that's pretty much foolproof for me. They're sharp, they're efficient, they're smooth, they're comfortable. And that's with pretty much every Gillette blade out there. I just really enjoy using them. It doesn't seem to matter which one I pick up. They all perform very similar and it, it always begs the question as are they all the same? Are they just rebranded? Just to sort of make it look like there's a lot of choice on the market but there really isn't because they do all have similar traits in terms of the way they shave. But at the end of the day, in my mind, they all shave a little bit different, they all do a different thing, they all last longer or less than each other. And that's it, it's one of my favourite modern blades, for sure. Right, I'm just rinsing the brush out. Loads of lather left in the brush, honestly. There was enough there to do another three or four passes, so you really have to be more careful with how much I load, even though, it, really, to be honest, I would rather load it a lot heavier than it needs to be and throw lather away and underload it and then have to go back later on and get more and have a crap ladder as a result. And that's pretty much how you want it to look. It's a bit of an odd shape, no, it's not perfectly round around that way, it's sort of squarish, but you don't want any like, gaping holes looking like that. You want it to look uniform like it did the day you got it. So make sure you rinse your brushes out a lot, get all that excess soap out from the base of the knot, give it a real good flick and then on the towel just to take some of the excess moisture out and then I just leave every brush that I own, apart from my car shaving, like that, to dry. Evaporation goes up, makes a lot of sense to me. You put it like that, the evaporation will get stuck in the knot. So in logic and theory, the moisture can't escape, but can't get out. Unless your glue bump sticks out further than that. So if your glue bumps up here, you put it this way, the operation will still occur. If your glue bump is actually inside your handle, then I don't think evaporation will work quite as well with the knot facing down. You'd want the evaporation to go up. Right, just rinse the soap out. And then I'm going to chuck a little bit of aftershave splash on, which matches up very well with this soap. It really is a nice scent. It's really surprised me, I have to say. It's not a scent that, that blows my mind, but it's a scent that I could keep and really enjoy using whenever it comes around to it. Moil Grooming Wildflowers. Now this one isn't frosted, unfortunately. I would have loved it frosted. I do have another Moil Grooming Splash in the den as well, which I can't wait to use. Uh, Echoes. But this one's very floral. Three splashes for the head. Splashes for the neck and cheeks. And once again, it, that's extremely floral, this one, but it sort of carries okay on a bloke. Personally, I think it works way better on a woman. Works much nicer if I use it for my wife, but it's just a bit too floral. Just All right, and I'm back to finish the video. I forgot what I was talking about, but yeah, very nice splash, very nice soap. Splash, like I say, doesn't work very well. For a bloke in my opinion it is nice but 
I couldn't imagine really anyone using it in any situation for a fella. Yeah, it's more of a woman sort of scent, very floral. So, the soap today was Saerian, Saerian, not sure how to pronounce it, I'm just having a stab in the dark. Barrister Man, made for top of the chain as an exclusive. It smells very floral, but it's very nice. It does have a cologne type thing happening. It's not, not for everyone, but if you get a chance to sniff a tub, the, the tub would put me off, but the actual using it brought me back towards it. So if you're almost there with it and you just smell it out the tub, then I would suggest maybe grab it and have a go at it and see what you think once you've got it, because it does change quite a bit, it evolves a lot once you wet it. The brush for today was my Craving Shaving Siri brush which is a stunning brush, beautifully made, not a single striation or mark or anything on this handle, it's just perfect. No tooling marks, no sandpaper marks, just perfectly smooth. I can't see any imperfections really in the, the resin at all, I can't see anything wrong with it. I do enjoy or I prefer the smaller coin, I'm not sure whether they went to a bigger coin then. But the reason I like the small coin is you can see more of the base. If the coin was out to here, all the way around, you miss a lot, a lot of the brush. So, in my opinion, I think the smaller coin is better for anyone and everyone. And the knot is a Duranot, 26mm Duranot from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. Now, the razor for the head shave was the Above the Tie Calypso R1, which is a bit dirty now, covered in the soap scum, with a brand new Derby Usta blade, Derby Master, and it shaved superbly well. I've got a perfect PBS head shave. I've even taken skin off, it's that close. But a tiny little nick right there, but as you can see, it's not bleeding anymore, and it will scar, it will leave a mark. And I'll probably not be able to shave my hair for a little while now until it heals up. Face shave was done with the carb Christopher Bradley razor with a third use Gillette Nassay or maybe a fourth use, I'm not sure. B plate, which is 0.73 blade gap, something like that. The B plate for me is my sort of perfect blade gap, it's my perfect shaving for this one. I do believe I've got a open comb B plate on the way and I'm looking forward to trying that because the C plate was my favourite and I do prefer it for three or four days growth definitely. I just thought I'd stick the B plate there. And the C plate I only use with a shorter handle as well. I don't use the Argyle handle, which is this one. And finished off today with a little free hair, dab of styptic for the cut on my head, and then a good splash of moil grooming wildflowers, which is a superb splash. This one, believe it or not, I've actually used quite a fair bit out of that. The scent doesn't hang around for long, which I quite like. I can use pretty much anything after an hour or so I could just chuck something else on and it doesn't even affect it. And other than that, I hope you enjoyed that. A long one, enjoyable one. This will be coming off soon, so don't worry. It does look scruffy, it does look shit. But hopefully I'll find the time and I'll find the, the energy to put the straight out, get it stropped and wipe it off. Can't wait. Stay safe, drive safe, don't drink and drive. I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.